Welcome back. In the last video, we were looking at this cantilevered beam with this uniformly distributed load, and we did all this amazing stuff to come up with our shear diagram here. And in this part, we're going to go ahead and look at the moment diagram. There's actually a few really special things about the moment diagram, which I'll explain as we go through it. So I'll just go ahead and scroll down just so we have some more room. So there we go. We can draw our moment diagram here. I've also included these guidelines that I really like drawing just to make my moment and shear diagrams a little bit more cleaner. Great, so let's start our moment diagram here on the left-hand side. We wanna figure out what our moment is right here at point A, our internal moment. We can again take a very small cut, so a very tiny portion of this beam. I'll go ahead and draw it right here. So this is point A. We have our MA force, which we found to be 360 Newton meters. Then we have our shear force going down and our positive internal moment, I'll just call M and V for shear. We do have an AY reaction here, which is 60 Newtons. And then we also have our distributed load right there, acting on this very tiny portion of the beam, which is five Newton per meter. Well, since this distance is very tiny and I'm talking about infinitesimally small, it's incredibly small. This distributed load along with the 60 Newton reaction and the shear is not gonna affect our moment right at that point, just to the right side of A. So I can simply take the moments about this segment and set that equal to zero. I have our positive M there, and then I have this positive MA, right? This 360 Newton meter. And if I solve for M, we would get negative MA. That means M would be equal to negative 360 Newton meters. So our moment right at point A is negative 300 and 60 Newton meters, and it's zero up here. So now what about the rest of the moment diagram? Well, if you remember, the shear diagram gives us the slopes at any point along the moment diagram. So if we look at point A, which is right here, this point here, the magnitude of the shear is 60, and then it goes down to 55, and then 50, and 30, and 29, 28, all the way down to zero, so it's decreasing linearly. But 60 has a pretty high magnitude. So because it has a high magnitude, our slope is going to be very steep at this point. And because the shear is positive at that point, our slope is going to be positive. So we're going to have a very steep increasing positive slope. Well, what about halfway here? Our magnitude is 30. It's not as high as 60. So our slope isn't going to be as steep, but 30 is still positive. So that means our slope is still going to be positive. So somewhere down here, somewhere halfway at six meters, our slope is going to be positive, but not as steep as our first slope here. Well, what about at zero? Well, zero has no slope. So right at that point, our slope is going to be horizontal, right? It's flat. It's zero slope. So you can kind of see See that this moment diagram is going to curve and it's going to be concave down and that makes sense our shear diagram is linear so our moment diagram has to be parabolic so I can actually go ahead and draw in my moment diagram like that and it is concave down it is parabolic and it is all negative and I want to go back to this negative 360 here for a second and take a look at that beam segment that we used to come up with this negative 360 well, we found out that M was negative 360, right? So really this moment should be going clockwise. And this moment should be going counterclockwise, which it is. So if we redrew that beam segment here, we would have a moment MA here and a moment here. That's our internal moment, this 360. It's going opposite direction of which we assumed up here, and that's because of this minus sign. Now, if you remember from the last part, last video, our positive moment sign convention is like this, clockwise on the left end and counterclockwise on the right end, and it makes the beam have this smiley face. But here, it is counterclockwise on the left end and clockwise on the right end. So our beam is actually going to deflect like that, or this very small portion of the beam. It's gonna be a sad face, so this is negative and that kind of makes sense down here this should be negative 360. cool so what if we wanted to find any other point along this moment diagram and figure out what the numerical value of that point was so let's say for an example halfway at six meters what would be 
the moment there. Well, in previous videos, I've been saying that it's just the area under the curve, and that is partially true, and that's because all of our moment diagrams in those previous videos have started at zero, but this one's starting at negative 360. So I'm gonna get into a little bit of calculus and give you a more formal definition of how our shear diagram relates to our moment diagram and how we can use that shear diagram to come up with values along any point on the moment diagram. So the formal definition is as follows. Change in moment is equal area underneath the curve of the shear diagram from that point. So what is that saying? So this is basically saying the area underneath the curve, which is the term on the right hand side of this equation, this is the area underneath the shear curve. And that is going to be equal to the change in moment from that point. So if I'm trying to figure out what the moment is at this point, I can use this definition to come up with the change in moment and add that value to our initial point, which is negative 360. So we're taking the area from point A and we're going all the way to halfway which I'll just call C. So the change in moment from point A to point C will be the area underneath this curve. Well, what is the area underneath that curve between A and C? The area is, well, it's a trapezoid, right? So I can take one half base one, which is 30, plus base two, which is 60, and multiply it by the length, which is six meters. And that should be equal to 270 Newton meters, positive. 270 newton meters. So this is the change in moment from A to point C. So our initial moment at A is this negative 360. So in order to find the value of this moment here, we need to take this 270 and add it to negative 360. Well, negative 360 plus the change in moment is 270. That equals 90, negative 90 newton meters. So the value of the moment here is negative 90. 